Hello, my friends. I am back with the next video of functions. In the previous video, we talked about how to graph any function. And if you haven't watched it, you should. But trigonometric functions are harder to graph using the evaluating method. So let's start with the trigonometric functions. Trigonometric functions are defined using a right angle triangle. This is a triangle with a 90 degrees angle. Let's name each side of the triangle. The longest side that is in front of the 90 degrees angle is called the hypotenuse, denoted as h. Now, we have to choose an angle of reference. In this case is theta, and the side that is in front of the angle of reference is the opposite side. Let's name it OP. And the side that is between the angle of reference and the 90 degrees angle is the adjacent angle. If we know the angle theta, we know the ratio between each side of the triangle, because they are well defined up to a scalar factor. The first trigonometric function is sine of theta, equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine of theta is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, and tangent of theta is the ratio between opposite side and the adjacent side. These three functions are the basic functions, and there are also the reciprocal functions. This is 1 divided by the basic functions. Therefore, cosecant is hypotenuse divided by the opposite side. Secant is the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side, and Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, equal to the ratio of the adjacent side and opposite side. Let's solve an example. What is the value of the opposite side and the hypotenuse in this triangle? We know the values of the angle and also the adjacent side. Let's review our functions and see which one we can use in this problem. We can't use the sine function because we don't know the opposite side or the hypotenuse. But we can use the cosine function to get the value of the hypotenuse. The first step is to clear the hypotenuse in this function and evaluate using a calculator the value of this ratio. And now we are going to use the tangent function to know the value of the opposite side. Again, we have to clear the opposite side and evaluate. And these are the values for the sides of the triangle. We have studied the trigonometric functions in triangles. And now we are going to study these same functions in a coordinate system by using a unit circle. It means it's a circle centered at the origin with radius 1. This time, instead of naming the x's x and y, we are going to call them sine and cosine of a given angle. This angle is theta as always. As you can see, when we draw a line with angle theta, the hypotenuse will always have the same value, 1. This is why we can name the x's as sine and cosine. One of the most important trigonometric identities related to this circle is the sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equal to 1. Now I'm going to show you my favorite part of trigonometric functions. But first, remember that one circle has 360 degrees and that is equal to 2 pi radians. Okay, here we go. When we substitute any angle, in the function sine and cosine, we are going to have these numbers. Every time you use sine and cosine functions, you are going to get these same numbers. Here is a table for you so you don't have to remember every number and you don't have to use the calculator every time you want to know the function sine or cosine of an angle. So screenshot and check it later. You are going to use it. 
Here you can see the graphs of sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine is this one, is in the horizontal plane, and the difference between sine and cosine is that when sine is equal to zero, cosine is equal to one. And tangent is a non-continuous function. That's why we have several lines instead of only one continuous line. Let's solve one more exercise together. In this case, we are going to prove the identity sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equal to 1 when theta is equal to 45. The first step is to substitute theta equal to 45 in the identity. And with the properties of the powers, we know that this is true. And now we are going to use the values of the table to substitute sine of 44 degrees and cosine of 44 degrees. And again, some algebra using the power rules. And we obtain 2 divided by 4 plus 2 divided by 4 equal to 4 divided by 4 and that is equal to 1. And that's how we prove that the identity is true. This is a bonus for you. Solve the next equation when alpha is equal to 30 degrees and beta is equal to 60 degrees. And then tell us what you find out about these two equations and write it in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you later guys! Want to learn more? Check out the next video. Quick reminder to subscribe to Geekly.edu.